Welcome back to our, our next video in this uh, uh, lecture on data wrangling. And so at this point, we've uh, got our data cleaned up, we've got our data organized, uh, we've got it in a, a tidy format and understood the difference between wide and long data. And now we want to talk about kind of, you know, what you do with data once you start getting it in. Uh, but before, um, you know, any sort of statistical analysis or detailed statistical analysis, so I want to talk now about uh, both you know, how we use tools in R to subset data, um, to filter out different criteria, and also how we can use it to summarize uh, data. So I'm going to rely on uh, this frog data set that we used as an example in lab last week um, and think about, you know, if I have this whole data table, how do I access parts of it? So for example, if I just wanted uh, to, to look at, you know, rows six through 10 and columns two and three, I could, you know, access that by saying, instead of looking up just a single number, I can look up uh, a whole series of rows, a whole series of columns, uh, and then just get that subset of data. So if I know what columns I need to work with, I can grab those. If I know what rows I want need to work with, I can grab those. I can also do this by name. So I can say I want to look at just uh, data color, uh, data dollar sum color, and then look at say rows six through 10. Um, I can also do this, and this is probably the most powerful way to, to do this, is to do this based on uh, logical comparisons. So here I can see how we can look at, uh, take the whole data set, and let's say within this whole data set, uh, it's, it's pretty rare for me to know exactly what rows I want. I mean, columns is pretty column. You, you know, I want the tadpole and color data, or I want the color data. But to know which rows you want, you're often doing that by some sort of logical based subsetting. So here is an example saying if I want just the rows uh, where there's more than five tadpoles, I would put in you know, this logical comparison, tadpoles bigger than five, to find out where which for which rows that's true and which rows that's false. And then you know, comma, you know, and I'm not giving columns here, so it's returning me all columns. Uh, also worth noting, particularly useful on columns. I can also refer to them by name instead of by uh, number. So we saw that we can do that with the, the dollar sign referencing uh, within a, a, a data frame or, or list. But we can also do this uh, in the within the square bracket. So I could have said like, uh, you know, comma, you know, and then quoting like color. So if I put color in quotes as a as a string, that would know that's the column I want to. And that actually can often be more, a, a more robust way of, of coding up things rather than referencing by column numbers because columns can always shift in, in data structures if they get reorganized, but usually the headers uh, stay the same. Uh, there's also another syntax that's part of base R for doing this subsetting, uh, literally the, the subset function where you pass it, the first argument is the data set that you want to subset, and the second are the, the logical uh, uh, criteria that you're using for that that subsetting, and I'll just point out that either of these syntax is are are completely valid. We'll go over more both of them in more detail in lab two as well. So once I've uh, organized my data set and and you know filtered out the parts of the data that I'm interested in, uh, one of the things I'm often going to do early on is think about some of the ways of summarizing that data using summary statistics. Uh, and some of these are telling me about uh, the range of the data. So example, uh, here we have uh, a, a min function that gives the minimum, the smallest value, a max function that gives the maximum, uh, the largest value, and the range function that gives you both the min and the max at the same time. So that kind of tells us about the bounds of this, this variable. Uh, the median function tells us about the most central Value. So if you were to sort all of your data in order and ask, uh, you know, where is the 50th percentile? So where, where, at what value do you have exactly half as many uh, values ahead of you and half as many below you? Um, and that idea of, of looking up things by percentiles can be generalized, not just to the median, but we can think about that for any quantiles we might be interested in. So we can use the quantile function. Uh, and here, uh, this one takes you know, the data set you're interested in, comma, 
the quantiles that you're interested in. So, and it will actually can take a single value or a vector. So here it's showing an example of taking a vector that has both 0.25 and 0.75 and returning us back the 25th percentile of the data and the 75th percentile of the data. Uh, IQR, the next function, stands for interquartile range, which is just the difference between that 25th and 75th percentile. Um, and so, you know, the, the overall range of the data tells you the most extreme values. Uh, an interquartile range tells you about the, 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 the range of the, the middle 50% of your data. So it's more telling you more about the center of the data. Um, we also have probably the most common statistic that we're going to talk about uh, in terms of simple descriptive statistics is going to be the mean, which tells us, you know, this is just the mean function just tells you the arithmetic mean. You know, the sum of your values divided by um, the number of samples you have. And the other thing we're going to think about is other ways to kind of measure the variability in a data set. And, and later on this semester, we'll use this idea of, of variance as a measure of variability um, as one of our main measures about uncertainties. Uh, so variance, the equations are in the, the lab two handout, but it's essentially uh, the, the sum of squared errors in the data set. So you take the difference between uh, each data set and some reference value. So in this case, it would be the mean. Uh, you square all those differences and you uh, divide by uh, the sample size to kind of take the mean of, of that error. Now, the, the one unintuitive thing about variance is that its units are in the square of the units. So if, if you know, if, if this data might be, say, you know, frogs per pond or frogs per cubic uh, meter of, of water or whatever the units are here. You know, the, the units in variance are that squared. So it's not a particularly intuitive measure. So what we often work with in, in practice is the standard deviation, which is the square root of that variance, uh, which is in the same units as the uh, data itself. And if you have a normal distribution, uh, you know, you, you probably learn from your intro stats class that 95% of the data typically falls within about two standard deviations, plus or minus two standard deviations. <clears throat> uh, we might also be interested in, in not just how our data varies, but how two different variables co-vary with each other. And so there's a covariance function, a very similar equation to the variance. And similarly with the variance, it comes back um, with, with units that are, are often hard to interpret. And so it might, in this case, it would be the units of frogs times the units of uh, tadpoles. Um, because of that, we often are more interested in uh, normalizing out the units of a covariance to understand how two things are related to each other in a, in a dimensionless quantity, one that doesn't have units. And so that, that's the correlation coefficient, uh, which we can calculate in uh, R using the function core. Uh, and here we get a correlation coefficient uh, 0.987, which is a you know, very high correlation because correlation can only go from uh, one, a perfect correlation, uh, to a per perfect positive correlation to minus one, a perfect negative correlation with zero halfway in between, indicating no relationship between two variables. So this is very close, a very, very strong relationship between frog and tadpole densities. The other thing that we often want to do with these summary statistic functions is to apply them not one at a time to individual variables, but we, can, we might need to sometimes apply them uh, to whole uh, data tables or matrices or arrays or, or higher dimensional uh, data sets, particularly when we have large amounts of data. And so there's a, a, very, a variety of functions in R that are handy for applying functions to other data sets. Um, and so uh, the simplest version of that is just called apply and applies. Its first argument is the data set you're interested in. So here we're looking at a subset of the frog data, uh, the first five rows and, and the first two columns. And I want to say, let's say I want to take uh, the sum of that data, so add the frogs and the tadpoles together, uh, and I want to do that by row. And if I want to do that by row, I can use margin equals one because that's the first dimension of the matrix. You remember that you know, we could use square brackets, something, comma, something. The first dimension is rows, the second dimension is columns. And then the third argument here is the function we want to apply. So if I want to apply, I want to calculate the sum 
uh, by row, I can put function equals sum. When I calculate the mean by row, I can put function equals mean or function equals uh, standard deviation or you know, any, any of the functions we talked about showed on the summary statistics, but any function in R more generally, like if you need to do some more advanced uh, analysis or manipulation with that data, you can apply literally any function in R uh, by row or by column. Um, so we can also do this by column, where the only difference here is that the second dimension of our data set is, is the column, so we would say margin equals two. Uh, and if you work with arrays that are higher dimension, you can actually specify third, fourth, fifth margin, whatever, depending on which dimension of the, the data you want to apply a function to. Uh, the other thing that's often really common that you need to do uh, when subsetting and working with data is you might be interested in applying a function not by row or by column, but uh, based on different groups that are uh, in your other covariates. And so to do that, we can use what's called the t apply function. And the t apply is like the apply, and that the first argument is the data set you want to analyze. The third argument is the function um, you want to apply to it. But the difference is the, the middle argument, instead of giving the margin of just an integer, one or two or whatever, it's the you give it the, the other categorical variables you want to use to lump your data by. So in this case, we're going to give it both the color data and the spots data. And so it's going to come up with all the unique combinations of colors and spots. So it's going to say, you know, going to get uh, non-spotted blue frogs, spotted blue frogs, non-spotted red frogs, spotted red frogs. And then it's going to apply the mean function to each of those groups. And it's it, one thing that's nice about the t-apply function that it doesn't require these data sets to be balanced. They don't have to be the same size. You don't have to you know, reorganize your data in kind of in a, a matrix format to use an apply function. You can just say, you know, I want to use one or more variables, uh, typically categorical variables or logical variables, to uh, do the, the groupings. Okay. Uh, 